Hey everybody, here are the stars and welcome to the live show today. We have a power pack show. Let me go ahead and share screens with you guys. Make sure that you guys are all here. Um, present to everyone right on. Okay. I'm going to pop in here in the chat. Make sure everybody's here and good to go. I see the Hermit Indoor Ice Lacrosse. We have, if you only, no, oh, that's me, <laughs> <laughs> in the dark. So let's go ahead and get started, you guys. Um, we have a lot to cover. Uh, the main reason why we're here today is to cover Adam and Eve, the rest of the story. Now, I have this apocryphal text pulled up. This is actually called the uh, chapter. Let's see here. This is um, the Forgotten Books of Eden is what this is. And so basically the, the caveat to this, you guys, is take the best, leave the rest. What we're really here to do is find clues within this text and relate it back to things that we've discovered on this channel because we all know that truth has one language. And if we can find that one truth in that one language, then at that point, we'll be able to derive the truth. We made a lot of amazing discoveries here on this channel, um, and that's in part because of each and every one of you. And basically, it's the point now where things are kind of coming rapid fire, and it, it can get overwhelming. But I definitely know we're on the right track because we're getting confirmations all over the place, you guys, all over the place. So... This is what we're going to look at. I do have some notes pulled up, so we're not going to have to read through this entire thing. I've kind of pulled out the main points of this story. And basically, this is the chronicling of the moments after the fall of man. It fill, fills in all of the blanks, fills in what happened to Adam and Eve, what they ate. Um, how you know It talks about their flesh bodies that they were given. All of the things that we've kind of discovered here. Now, I have read this book, but it was back in 2008, and I had no idea um, what was going on with it before. And so now I'm starting to understand the truth about what is going on because everything's coming full circle, right? So um, we got a couple new folks in here. Finally, I'm awake. Albert Kerr, Freakazoid, Uncool Paranoia, Ill Illusion Shattered. And um, make sure you guys are on here. I'm going to go ahead and share this. I want all of you guys to share this as well, and uh, we'll be good to go, you guys. All right, so let's take a look here at what this is all about. Let me pull this up here. Here's the notes I have here for this. Now, this is pretty amazing. Now, these are excerpts from the actual story here called At the Adam and Eve, and it's kind of like the rest of the story. Again... We're going to take the best and leave the rest, um, but we're going to cover that too a little bit later in the show. Let's take a look here. Um, let's take a look here. Okay, so what we're seeing here, it says, but Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first abode. Now, these again, these are excerpts directly from Adam and Eve. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done. So they're kind of lamenting the, the fall, the sin. And it says, and they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. Now, this cave of treasures becomes their home for the next several years as they're trying to come to terms with what happened during the fall. Okay. And it says, and they came... And as they came to it, Adam wept over himself and said to Eve, look at this cave that is to be our prison in this world and a place of punishment. Now, this is interesting because the inner eye kind of looks like a cave, you guys. And we're going to tie all this in because what we're also seeing with the cave and what happens later in this story is they talk about not being able to see in the dark. In other words, dark was kind of a foreign thing to them. They had not experienced darkness before, and God explains to them why they have to experience the darkness. Let's continue reading here. He says, what is it compared to the guard with the garden? What is its narrowness compared with the space of the other? What is this rock by the side of those groves? What is the gloom of this cavern compared with the light of the garden? You see, 
What is this overhanging ledge of rock to shelter us compared with the mercy of the Lord that overshadowed us? Notice this, this arch theme. Okay. Now watch this. Let's pull this up here. Because this arch theme means something. This overhanging rock. I think it was this one I pulled up. Okay, here it is. So uh, this is the this is the arch. This is our planet Earth here in the convex lens, and I believe the arch he was talking about was this firmament, okay, overhanging, and he could see it. Adam's describing his ability to see this this arch overhanging him, right? This goes on. He says, "But now we do not see as we did." So they're saying it right here. Our eyes have become a flesh. Remember I was telling you guys that we didn't have physical eyes before the fall and that our physical eyes were a manifestation of the, the salvation plan, but also the sin was encoded in our flesh suits as a reminder. And there's precedent for this. God often um, you know, created or commanded us to do certain things in the Bible that reminded us of the sin. For instance, when Moses uh, was instructed to build the bronze serpent on the staff, that was God reminding the Israelites of the sin because they were complaining that they said we were better off in Egypt. Why did you bring us out here in the desert to die and starve and be thirsty? And God's like, well, let me show you about the copper blue blood that you came out of out of Egypt. So he put a bronze serpent, which is 88% copper, up and he said, if you do not look at it, you will die. The serpents will eat you. And he told them to stare at it. So here's a precedent of God creating something or commanding someone to create something that that basically ha has encoded in it the truth about the sin, right? So it says here, but now we did not see as we did. Our eyes have become a flesh. They cannot see in the like manner that we saw before. Now, here's another precedent to this because there was a man, an astronomer, who basically had cataracts and he had his cataracts removed. So this is a man that had experience with looking up into the night sky before and then after when his cataracts were removed, he was able to see the night sky very brilliantly is what he said. Now, of course, he's going to have a tough time describing this to us all because we do not see the night sky as he does. But there's something more to it, you guys. And the cataracts that he had were inside the lens of his eye. And I believe that, that those were the scales that fell from Saul's eyes in the Bible. And that's how he became to see because the scales or the, basically the lens of your eye was removed. And that looks as the, the cross section of the lens looks like scales. And so I think that basically the same thing happened to Saul and that's why he was able to see. Okay, I'm going to pop back in the chat here and make sure you guys are good to go. We got Albert Kerr, Crystal Dolan, Emmanuel Diaz, illusion shattered. Uh, Let's see here, real sweet. Who else do we have in here? Angela Stars, good morning. Illusion Shattered. What else do we have here? King Seed, Albert. Thanks, you guys, for showing up. Freakazoid. All right, we're going to continue on here. And this is going to go on because let's take a look here. Let's go back in here. All right. We've got the notes, and here it is. All right, let me pop this link in here for those of you guys that want to check this out, because this is pretty cool, the story of Adam and Eve. All right, sacred texts. Mm. Now, let's see here. Let's pull this back up. We're going to cover some other things in a little bit, too. We're going to... Talk about the yellow brick road, the Tower of Babel, um, after we're done covering some of these main points. We're going to have to break this up into three or four parts, I think, with this story of Adam and Eve, because it's pretty extensive, you guys. All right. Let's take a look here. So then <clears throat> it says, Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwelt in the garden? See, they had different bodies. So now when we accept the fact that God, when he gave us skins, that it was actually a new body, when we start to accept that fact that the original body was different 
then our new bodies, um, then we can understand how he could have encoded all of this into the architecture of our bodies. We get, we can now begin to understand that salvation plan being the crossing of the optic nerves where Jesus was crossed, uh, was crucified on the cross and the eyes of good and evil. Okay. So those are the, the that's, that's the, the salvation plan, our eyes of good and evil and all the other eye synchronicities and revelations that we've discovered. Okay. Now this goes on. It says, and as they prayed, Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock and roof of the cave. And I, again, I think that's this. Okay, he described it as, as rock, but it's actually it's the firmament. Okay. Um, and it says here that covered him overhead so that he could see neither heaven nor God's creatures. Okay, that's Molech, you guys. That's why the stars are spinning in this in this firmament. It's almost like a shield over us or like a dome. And we're locked away from heaven. So he wept and smote heavily upon his breast until he dropped and he was dead. Of your own free will have you transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and an exalted state. Such as I have, so that I deprived you of the bright nature in which you then were. And made you come out of the garden to this land rough and full of trouble. So they went from an exalted state in perfection to a demoralized state. So that makes perfect sense. You know, for us to think that after the sin of man, that we look and feel and touch exactly the same way that we were before the fall of man is a ridiculous assertion. We changed, you guys. We were changed. These flesh suits that we have are nothing compared to the glory of original creation of man. Okay. We we're made in God's image, glorious creatures, okay? Same thing happened to Satan, but he went to the dark side, right? So he went from this beautiful angel to the lowest of the lowest beasts, right? He had to crawl on his belly and eat dust all the days of his life, which brings me to this image. This is actually the proposed World Trade Center, One World Freedom Towers, one of the proposed uh, images of the World Trade Freedom Tower. And... The serpent eating the dust is this. These are the fim fimbriae of the fallopian tubes. Let's take a look at this. Let's do a side-by-side because -side. this is amazing, you guys. This is the fallopian tube. Let's zoom this out. Actually, let's do this. Move this over here. Move this here. Now, what you're looking at here is the fallopian tube. Now, foul is, means fallacy. Fallacy is a lie. This is the lie. He's the father of the lie. Think about those words. The father conceives, right? The father of the lie. Fallopian tube. And look at the fimbria here. They look just like the fingers of the actual fallopian tube. And when a snake eats eggs, here's the eggs coming out of the ovary, there is a peristalsis action of swallowing. It looks like swallowing. And that's what God said, the serpent. He said, you will go on your belly. You will eat the dust all the days of your life. So you basically all of us are just recycled dust, right? We're basically recycled dead people at this point. Because the graves, people go into the grave. They turn to dust. Trees grow. We eat the trees. The, the dust is blown around. We're, it is literally the serpent eating its tail. This is the serpent eating its tail. It's eating the seed of the woman over and over every month. The seed goes into the fallopian tube, is consumed, and we are born into sin. This is the truth. So they tried to recreate this in this World Trade Center. This was one of the proposed buildings for the One World Freedom Tower. You see the diamonds. But look at this, you guys. Four sides on this diamond, four sides on this diamond. That's 44, right? So that's green. That's Obama, the president under, under which this would open. And this is the fimbriae, and this is the serpent eating. And it almost looks like a serpent, doesn't it? Sideways. So wanted to touch on that real quick. Now we're back in the chat. Check on you guys. See what's going on. And then we'll continue this, get this going. All right. Um, any new faces in, in here? Albert, just earthbound misfit. Light in the dark place. Just uh, Mariette. Thanks for coming, you guys. Got a good little group today. And 
let's see here. Let's go back to the story. Now, I'm not going to cover this whole story, but we're just going to cover part of it today. We'll come back to the rest later, you guys. Now, this goes on. It says, and they prayed. Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock of the roof of the cave and covered him overhead so that he could see neither heaven nor God's creatures. So he wept and smote heavily upon his breast until he dropped and it was dead. Of your own free will, have you transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalted state? This is God talking to Adam, such as I have, so that I deprived you of the bright nature in which you then were and made you come out of the garden to this land rough and full of trouble. Then Adam wept and said, O God, when we dwelt in the garden and our hearts were lifted up, we saw the angels that sang praises to heaven. But now we do not see as we used to. When we entered the cave, all creation became hidden from us. So even though they see the stars in the firmament, they don't see the angels as they really are. You guys, the book of Enoch says that the, that the stars in heaven are of the righteous and the angels. That's what it says in the book of Enoch. And I recommend you checking out um, the book of Enoch and what is it called? Endeavor Freedom. Go on Endeavor Freedom's um, channel. It's Zen Garcia. Look at his newest video, Proving the Validity of the Book of Enoch. He talks about how there are ancient copies found with the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947 and that those copies are now all in private ownership and that it was considered at its time the greatest biblical find in world history, the Book of Enoch. Yes, you heard me correctly. They described it as the greatest find in biblical history. Why would the Book of Enoch be the greatest find in biblical history? And why are all the copies of the Book of Enoch in private hands and that are not available to scholars for analysis? Why? Why is that? Now you know because it holds the secrets, okay? It holds the secrets. So this goes on. Then God and the Lord said unto Adam, When thou wast under subjection to me, thou had as a bright, bright nature within thee. See, we had different bodies. And for that reason, couldst thou see things afar off? See, we could see things far off. We could see through this ceiling that's above us. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see things afar off, but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. Now, this is interesting because we went from Bruce Jenner, brutish, to Caitlyn Jenner, the cat, the female. Words mean everything, you guys. Words mean everything. So this goes on. It says, And Adam and Eve went from before the gate of the garden to the southern side of it and found there the water that watered the garden from the root of the tree of life. Now, this is interesting because this root of the tree of life is, in fact, I believe, this, the hyloid canal, the root of the tree of life. The root is here. This is the stump. When a child is born, the umbilical cord is cut. It's called a stump. These are the stumps that cover the earth. There are many trees in the garden, but one tree of life leading back to the father, the narrow gate. You can almost see this as a tree. It forms a tree. It's a stump which connects to the retina. These form the branches. You can see the tree of life. Okay. Now, this goes on. They found there the water that watered the garden from the root of the tree of life, and it parted itself from thence into four rivers up over the earth. Okay. Then they came and drew near to the water and looked at it, and they saw that it was the water which came forth under the tree of the root of life in the garden. And Adam said, after he was raised, O oh God, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water. But since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. The water theme. This is all about the flood. It's all about the parting of the Red Sea. See, it's the water theme. It's about the 40 weeks gestation of the child in the womb, the vitreous humor, the water theme. See? And now they need the water. They thirst for it. Why? Because they went from the heavenly waters of the cerebrospinal fluid now to the local waters in the eyes of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The two trees, good and evil, are your two eyes. Now you're seeing truth. Now they need these waters of the vitreous humor. 
inside the eye. They're locked in here. They're not getting water from heaven anymore. The cerebrospinal fluid, the waters that never go dry. They're self-replenishing. Then God said to Adam, while the house was under my command and was a bright angel, thou knewest not this water. See? He didn't know, we didn't know this water, this local water. We only knew the waters of heaven. But after that, you transgress my commandment, and now you can't do without water, wherein to wash thy body and make it grow, for it is now like that of beasts, and is in want of water. So we're in the beast realm down here now, on the convex lens. We're in the matrix, right? So we need water in this realm. O oh, Eve, remember the glory that rested on us in the garden. O oh, Eve, remember the trees that overshadowed us in the garden while we moved about them. These were giant trees, you guys. That's why you have stumps all over the earth. These once overshadowed us in the garden. O oh, Eve, remember that while we were in the garden, we knew neither night nor day. But when I heard, uh, see, they didn't know night and day. So there was no um, dance of melatonin and serotonin. There was no land of milk and honey serotonin melatonin we did not sleep back then everything was always bright it says here but when i heard of thy transgression i de deprived thee of that bright light yet of my mercy i did not turn thee into darkness but i made thee the body of flesh it says it right here we got made bodies of flesh over which i spread this skin in order that it may be bare cold and heat Thus, O Adams, has this night deceived thee? It is not to last forever, but is only of 12 hours. When it is over, daylight will return. And there's your 12 and 12. 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness, 12 um, cranial nerves on each side of your brain. There are 12 pairs, 12 hours of light, 12 hours of dark, the pineal balance of melatonin and serotonin at the center of your brain at the cross where Christ was crucified. Let me go back into the chat. Make sure you guys are still standing up because this is crazy information. We got Liam Exmo in the house. I know we're trying to decode that money, money that came in and that Liam was telling us to decode. I did the best I could with that, but I don't know. I, I go with the Holy Spirit. So I only decode things that the Holy Spirit leads me to decode. So hopefully you guys made some ground on that that money that surfaced, that evil money. Um, I don't know. So we will see. All right. So we have M. Gore in the house. Brenda, thanks you guys for showing up. Yes, the 42 times 2 is the 84. And the 42 is the, the, the only angle that you can view a rainbow at. It's 42 degrees. Now you guys are seeing the whole picture fit together. Let's continue on with this. We're going to move on to a couple other topics. We're not going to be on here for an extreme amount of time, you guys, today. So this goes on. It says, so 12 hours, and, and O oh Adam, I have made the day for thee and for the children after thee for them to work and toil. And what did God say in Genesis? He said, you will toil in the soil, basically, is what he said, right? So now we know why there has to be light and day, because he's saying he's making the day for Adam and his children to toil in the soil. And the night I have made to rest from their work, and for the beasts of the field to go forth by night and seek their food. But God and the Lord said to Adam, verily I say unto thee, this darkness will pass from thee every day I have determined for thee until the fulfillment of my covenant, when I sh will save thee and bring thee back again into the garden, into the boat of light thou longest for, wherein there is no darkness, I will bring thee to into it the kingdom of heaven. So, but first, Adam has to basically for 500 years and 50, 5,500 years, Adam has to wait. His bloodline has to wait. You guys, we are at the door right now. This is the door back to the paradise garden, back to heaven. Why? Because in the Hebrew calendar, we are in the year 5776. Quickly approaching 5777. 
So you're asking, Casey, aren't we past due? That's 5,700 years, not 5,500 years. Let's go back and look in here when he talks about the 5,500. Let's go back in here because it talks about it in here. Um, let me find it. I thought I had it copied into my notes. Maybe I didn't, but it's in here. Let's find it. Oh, here it is. So here God says, and O Adam, all this misery which thou hast wrought upon thyself will not avail against my rule, neither will it alter the covenant of the 5,500 years. So we're here, you guys. This is it. We're in the age of Aquarius. The waters of the Holy Spirit. Remember, all the water themes is bringing us back full circle. So God has his cycles of time, too. Like the Ouroboros has his cycle of eating the dust, the Fimbriae. But exactly what has happened now is that we're seeing this all come full circle in God's timing, you see. To me, that's exciting. All right, let's continue on with this. This is fascinating. And God said to Adam, all this misery that thou has been made to take upon thee because of thy transgression will not free thee from the hand of Satan and will not save thee. But I will, when I shall come down from heaven and shall become flesh of thy seed and take upon me the infirmity from which thou sufferest. Then the darkness that came upon thee in his cave, in this cave, shall come upon me in the grave and when I am in the flesh of thy seed. So there it is. That's the prophecy of Christ to come. God in the flesh says here, and whereas aforetime the serpent was the most exalted of all the beasts, now it was changed. It became a slippery and meanest of them all, and it crept on his breast and went on its belly. When the cursed serpent saw Adam and Eve, it swelled its head. This is the circumcision we were talking about, you guys. The swelling of the, 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 the serpent's head. And it's like, I mean, let's put it bluntly, it's like an erection, right? And when you get circumcision, you're removing the ring from around the swelled serpent's head. That is why God had the Israelites be circumcised. Because they were the seed of Jesus to come. So God was showing conquering the ring of Saturn. Conquering the ring from around the serpent, the Saturn, okay? And you see how he's built into our anatomies the truth, okay? So the man's penis is like the pineal penis, and that is representing the serpent, basically, entering the woman. And it says here, it stood on its tail, and with eyes blood red, did as if it would kill them, you see. Now, however, be thou dumb and speak no more, thou and thy race. He's talking to the serpent here. Because in the first place has the ruin of my creatures happened through thee, and now thou wishes to kill them. This is the enmity between the seeds, okay? The serpent is mad because we he, he deceived God. He was taken from his former state, made into a serpent. He's been cursed to eat the dust, eat the eggs of the woman coming out of the womb, and for the days of his life, and now he wishes to kill the seed of God. This is why, this is the central theme of the Bible. We, in religion, were taught this is the peripheral um, theme, but it's actually the central theme. It's the central theme of the Bible, that, that the serpent and the woman are at odds with one another, you see. And that's why the woman has birth pangs. The reason why she has birth pangs is because the serpent is represented in her female anatomy, okay, as we just told you. There's the birth pangs that the woman will experience. This doesn't make the woman bad. It makes, it's, it's, the, it's the encoding of the entire truth inside of our anatomy and our flesh suit so that we could one day find it and know who the true God is. The God of the Bible, the God of Jesus Christ is the true God because it's in the very creation, and no other God could have created us with all this truth put into it. That's what God wants us all to find. And I know it gets a bit confusing and overwhelming at times, but if you just sit and think about it and trust the words that you're hearing and understand it and actually try to absorb it, it will reveal itself to you. Then you will start finding synchronicities as to the truth, th things that I haven't even found yet. But see, when we're in denial and we think this is too far-fetched, 
you just reject it and then you're cut off to the truth because you're not seeking the truth. Then it says here, then the serpent was struck dumb and spake no more. So God struck the serpent down because he actually tried in this scenario to deceive um, Adam and Eve again. And what happened in this scenario is uh, Satan came down with a bunch of uh, angels or fallen angels and they transformed themselves into an angel of light. Okay, it says down here. And a wind came to blow from heaven by command of God that carried away the serpent from Adam and Eve and threw it on the seashore, and it landed in India. So this is where why the cobras are in India, right? If they were from God, they would ha have come to us in the cave and would tell us their errand. This is how you can understand the difference between an angel and a demon. An angel will tell you their errand, okay? They're not going to hide what they're there to do, okay? It says here, no sooner had Adam said this than an angel from God appeared unto him in the cave. And he said, oh, Adam, fear not. This is Satan and his host. He wishes to deceive you, and he deceived you at first, as he deceived you at first. For the first time, he was hidden in the serpent. But this time, he has come to you in the similitude of an angel of light, in order that when you worshipped him, he might enthrall you in the very presence of God. So, when people tell me, fill them all, is good, and how could we be so... You know, skeptical about this, about all these Christians trying to meet together. All meetings are not good meetings, you guys. All Christian meetings are not good meetings. I just showed you an apocryphal text of how Satan and his angels basically tried to deceive Adam and Eve in the cave and get them to bow down an act of worship to them, you see. And so what ended up happening was the... um that's what happened, you guys. So not all good meanings are good meanings. And when they use for the fill them all their symbol as a serpent eating its tail, as I just showed you, now you're beginning to see the truth. This is the serpent eating the dust right here, hiding in plain sight in the woman's anatomy. Every month we get an egg releases from the ovary. It's consumed by the serpent. If a pregnancy occurs, if the sperm meets the egg, uh, a, a cascade of hormones occur um, during this time. The endometrial lining, endometrium of the uterus is filling up with vascularity. It looks like the fig, okay? And it's preparing for the implantation of the egg, the fertilized egg, into the sidewall of the uterus. There it will grow into the human child, okay? Um, and then it will be born 40 weeks after the last menstruation of the woman's cycle. And this is the serpent eating its tail, the dust cycle that we're all stuck in. But the only way out is Jesus Christ and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we covered that. I want to check in the chat. And we got Teresa at C. Um, let's see here. Lee's in the house. Gordy. Truth viral. Thanks, you guys. Truth sets you free. Justin in Buffalo. Dez. Brenda. All right. Now, we are going to go to the Yellow Brick Road because I think we discovered what the Yellow Brick Road is. This is an old book called The Thrones and Palaces of Babylon and Nineveh, From the Sea to Sea. And in doing research on yellow bricks and the Tower of Babel, this popped up. We're switching gears here. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. Copy your question and paste it when I come back into the chat in case uh, I missed it, okay? It says here, let's take a look at this. Now, remember, Nimrod was trying to build a tower to heaven. Doesn't this kind of fit in with this? Because we're cut off from heaven, the tree of life. Now it's just tree stumps, umbilical cord stumps. Everything's a stump. Stump for Trump, right? And so now, what do we have here? Nimrod trying to rebuild the Tower of Babel. Ooh, wow, I just had a download from the Holy Spirit. Babel, baby, right? The baby has an umbilical cord. So Babel is trying to rebuild the, the, the umbilical cord for the baby. Babel baby. Now, 
ancient Egypt has a god called Ba, and it means something. Ba'el, right? We're stuck in the bell curve, sin, the sine wave. But that just hit me right now, and that was pretty amazing because I had not considered that before, that the baby, but in other words, being born, because remember, this is an analogy of the womb. The baby's in the womb right here. It's in the eye. We're born into the eye. And now we have Baal, and we also have uh, Babel, the Tower of Babel, baby Babel. That's what this is. Babies babble, don't they, when they come out? They can't speak. Confusing of the language, which is what happened in the Tower of Babel. That's why how they were not able to complete the Tower of Babel, because they all got turned into babies and were babbling. Babylon. Wow. Okay, this is crazy. All right, so this goes on. And it says here that on the northeast side is a wall of small bricks of the finest quality. And it is as firm today as when laid in the hand of the master builder thousands of years ago. The weather has channeled deep ravines in the sides of the mound, revealing here and there a mass of yellow bricks laid in white mortar and which are evidently a sun-dried and not kiln burn. They are not less than 12 inches square and 4 inches thick. They all bear the name and titles of King Nebuchadnezzar. The translation of the inscription on the one I brought away to be placed in my cabinet of curiosities is as follows. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, preserver of Bitsagal and Bitsada, eldest son of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the most eminent antiquarians in Babylon, researchers, Regard this ruin as the remains of the Tower of Babel. The remains of the Tower of Babel is the Yellow Brick Road. This is the Tower of Babel. This is the Yellow Brick Road spiraling up to heaven. This is amazing because in The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy follows the Yellow Brick Road. And... Oz is os, the cervical os, which is the opening of the cervix. That's os. We are in the land of os, the land of Oz. Let's pull this up here. Cervical os. This is the cervical os. Again, this goes back to the human anatomy. This is not hard to understand, you guys, if you seek first the truth. This is the cervical os. The first miracle that Jesus performed in the Bible at 12 years old was he was in the temple and he wowed the doctors and physicians. They were in awe of Jesus Christ at 12 years old. What could he have possibly said to make them in awe, to awe a physician or a doctor? And I believe these are the secrets that Jesus was sharing with them, which is why the doctors were in awe of him in the temple. Let's pull up that verse real quick. Then I'll be back in the chat to pick you guys up off the floor. All right. Jesus, temple, doctor, 12 years old. What is the 12 years old? Is the 12 cranial nerves? This is Jesus, the boy at the temple. Oops. Let's go here. Uh, let's see. Look, here it is. It says here, I know I'm skipping around a bit, you guys, but all of this is fitting in together. If you get lost, you got to take notes. It's all the information's here. You just have to open your eyes and your mind to it. Okay? It says here, Jesus got lost. They didn't know where he was. And it says here, um, where is he at? Where is it out here? Oh, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, they returned the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it, but they supposed him to have been in company when a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors. Both hearing them and asking them questions, and all that heard him were astonished at the understanding and answers. How did Jesus understand the anatomy of the body? 
This is what they were talking about. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt us with this, with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. So they were kind of upset at Jesus because he got lost. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not know that I be about my father's business. Okay. So there's the verse right there. There's the proof. Following the yellow brick road. Now there is a scene in the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz being born into sin, right? And is with the trees. Dorothy. Uh, yeah, Wizard of Oz. Just crazy, you guys. Here's the scene. These are the apples of the eyes of good and evil. Forbidden fruit right here in your face. The forbidden Taurus fields. Trying to be like God. We ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The two trees. Here's Dorothy on the yellow brick road. Which is the Tower of Babel. Listen. Listen to the voice of this tree. And you're going to listen to the voice of the other tree. Yin and yang. Black and white. Red and blue. So he was hungry. She was hungry. Do you see the juxtaposition? What you're looking at right here is the trees of the knowledge of good and evil off of the yellow brick road, the Tower of Babel. This is what they're trying to do. And you see that Dorothy is in the pineal position. This is also the crucifixion of Christ you're looking at here. Here's the straw man, the burning man. This is also the wicker man. The World Trade Center, two World Trade Center towers were the wicker, the legs of the wicker man. When you look through, let's look at this. Hollow World Twin Towers. Sorry, guys. A lot of information for Sunday, but this is the truth. These are the twin towers of the wicker man hiding in plain sight. This is all burning man ritual, burning the man in the cage. Nicholas Cage, the cage, did World Trade Center the same year he did The Wicker Man. Both those movies came out the same time, the same year, a few months apart. This is the legs of the burning Wicker Man. This is why you see the straw man in the middle between the two towers of the trees of knowledge of good and evil. Dorothy is kind of like the Jesus figure. She's like building seven. I'm sure if we looked up her numerology, the woman that played this, this part in The Wizard of Oz, we would see Jesus Christ references written all over this woman. Let's take a look here. Maybe we'll go do that right now because we're not really in a hurry today, are we? What was her name? Her name was... Pop that in the chat room. Oh, I can just research it. Let's let this play out real quick and well, then we'll look at that. Come along, Dorothy. You don't want any of those apples. Hmm. Are you hitting my apples on what they ought to be? Oh, no. It's just that she doesn't like little green worms. The green worm is the serpent. That's what that is. There it is. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil right there hiding in plain sight. Straw man. The straw man is the wicker man. Now, what is that? Let's go into that a little bit. Because this is amazing. It's all the material things that we think we need, and it builds a straw man, and it distracts us. We never see the central part. The straw man never really did listen to Dorothy, right? So that's the analogy, okay? She had to go through all this stuff to get them to wake up, right? They can't, The straw man's like, well, I don't have a – what he didn't have? He didn't have a heart. Oh, he didn't have a mind, right? The straw man didn't have a mind, okay? So that's what all this is about, like getting us to wake up to the realization that the material realm holds nothing for us. We can't take it to the grave with us. It All it does is distract us when we should have our mind fixed on heaven, the kingdom of heaven within. 
So let's look at this woman here. Um, let's take a look here. Let's check in the chat. Sometimes they like to disconnect us. Judy Garland, thanks, Illusion Shattered. Um, let's see here. Bum, bum, bum. Let's look up Judy Garland. Now that you guys saw the legs of the Wicker Man. Unbelievable. You guys, we are there's some major Holy Spirit coming through right now. I can feel it. Because these are like new discoveries that I didn't even know until I started actually being here with you and going through it. So here's Judy Garland. We're looking for Jesus Christ references. They cast these people. It's all written in a book. Uh, even down to her age of that she was when this happened. June 10th, there's 6 1. Oh, wow. 61 was the Hebrew year the World Trade Center fell. So right there in her birthday is encoded the year that the World Trade Center would fall. Um, let's see, 2022, she was born. Oh, okay, here we go. 622, that's 611, right? Because half of 22 is 11. So there's the 911 upside down and backwards. She was born. Uh, she died in the in the 1969 year. That's the yin and the yang. Okay, let's pull let's pull this out here. Wow, she died at 47 years old. That's building seven. That was 47 stories tall. So yes, in fact, her life contains the whole life of the World Trade Center. Let's type this out, you guys. This is unbelievable. We have to type this out. Wow. Okay. So, we have, she was born six, when you see this typed out, it will make more sense. Six, one, oh, six, one, oh, born, we have, she died at 47, okay, so this is Hebrew. Hebrew year of world of 9/11. Hebrew year, whoops, year of 9/11 was 50, 57, 61. So there's your 61. See this? Bam, bam. Okay, and then she died on 6:22. Died 6:22, and what is that? That's six. One one, one one, right? And what is this? Well, after nine eleven, nine eleven has one hundred and eleven days remaining in the year. So there it is, right there. Unbelievable. Now this goes on because she was forty seven years old when she died. Forty seven. That's building seven. Died at 47. Let's put died at 47. Building 7 had 47 stories tall. 47 stories. And it opened, Building 7 opened in the Hebrew year 5747. 7 opened in Hebrew 5747, which was 1987. Wow. So there it is right there, you guys. World Trade Center story encoded in this woman's life. She was born in 1969. We're in the we are in the year of 69 right now. She died in 1969. Unbelievable. This is disclosure, the year of 69. Disclosure. All right. So we got Judy Garland decoded. Um, let's close that. Ate of the forbid fruit. All right. Yeah, this is pretty nuts, right, Lee? Um, Truth Virals in the house. Christy Hel Helsper. France Truth. Truth sets you free. Murphy B. Ninja's in the house. Justin in Buffalo. All right. Let's see here. Now, um, I've got that covered. Let's close some of these windows up, you guys. Uh, let's see here. So we got the Tower of Babel covered. The yellow brick road okay so somebody was asking me about saturn okay and we were looking at the actual tower of babel 
and we saw that it spiraled up, right? It spirals up. Well, the outside ring of Saturn is not a ring at all. It's actually a spiral. And what is the spiral? The spiral is the aperture. It's the cervix. It's the, um, the iris of the eye acts like a spiral. And here we're seeing the rings of Saturn, Prometheus, uh, carving a dark channel in the F ring. So they're showing this, this aperture. Let's look up aperture and look at some pictures of aperture and see what we can find on here. Okay, let's see here. Aperture. So you can see that the aperture looks exactly like what we're seeing on the ring of Saturn right here. Here it is right here. There's a good image of it. Let's pull that up. And now we look at this. Let's do a side by side. All right. We'll pull that up. Oh, wow. There's the image right there. Unbelievable. That is just unbelievable. That is the aperture. Saturn born into the aperture. It's our prison, you guys. There is a way out, though, Jesus Christ, but few will find it because they don't want to admit that there is one religion and that there should be one God and one son. They want to say, oh, it's okay to be a Buddhist and it's okay to be this, but none of those gods have the, the secrets. None of them hold these secrets. They might have other things, but only one God created us with all this encoded in it, right? All right. Now, let's go back in the chat. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and pop those in here. We'll be on here for about another 10 minutes. Soccer bail. Yes. Check out my sports video that I did decoding the different balls uh, from the sports that are popular in the world football um soccer i think we even put uh, volleyball in there and we fit all of those sports balls into the eye the football is the convex lens the soccer ball is the honeycomb matrix surrounding us in the walls of the eye um uh, we even put a baseball in there i believe which is the star spin uh, in the night sky at the equator all of the balls fit why? Because sports keeps us divided, keeps us on teams, keeps us at a lower base of thinking so that we never search and have time to find the truth because we're too busy wondering if the 49ers are going to win the Super Bowl. You see, that's why God told us, keep your eyes fixed on heaven. Don't worry about what's going on in the material realm. And if you seek first the kingdom, all things will be added to you. All things will be added to you. You see, so I'm going to pull this up real quick. Google Wicker Man. I'm going to show you that this is that we're not making all this up. And that's why lipstick comes out in a spiral, right? Because think about this the serpent uncoils from the wicker basket, right? Stands up erect. And that is the serpent. The lipstick is the serpent coming up out of the coiled position. And we know that the fallen angels taught um, mankind the use of antimony, which is the main ingredient in eyeshadow. Coal, eyeshadow, K-O-H-L. Coal is also a color of eyeshadow. It's also a department store, coals. And um, that is an ancient Egyptian term, which means antimony. Okay, we did a video on that. The shadowing of the eyes they use antimony for. So um, let's see, Wicker Man, 1973. What was it? Okay, so Nicholas Cage starred in The Wicker Man in 2006, but he also starred in a um, film called Nine. I think it was called 9/11. Nicholas Cage, Nick Cage, 9/11. And they used Nick Cage in both the Wicker Man and the World Trade Center film. Oh yeah, here it is. Yes, it was in the same year. So the Wicker, so the World Trade Center film came out in the same year as the Wicker Man, both starring Nicolas Cage. So here's your World Trade Center Wicker Man. These are the legs of the Wicker Man, and that's why everybody burned and got turned into dust because the dust is the dustification 
It is the serpent eating the dust. You see how all this fits in. Now, eventually, they're going to come get me, you guys, for this information. Unless I'm protected by the Holy Spirit, there's no way that one man could expose all of these secrets and still be allowed to live unless I was protected by God. And that's just the truth, you guys. All right. So this goes on. We're almost done here. Because, okay, so what is the serpent? What is the kundalini? This is why you got to be very careful with this stuff. Because this, wait a minute. We'll cover that in a minute. The ancient Egyptians knew the secrets of the spine and the kundalini, which keeps you in a base on earth. So you basically become a god on earth if you seek out the kundalini. This is the jed. I think we covered this before, and I want to go over it again. This is the jed. This is the tendera light bulb in the ancient hieroglyphs in Egypt. They show this object called the jed. Okay. And what is Jed? It's the Jedi. Okay, it's the Force, and they know this. The Jed represents stability. It is the sacrum of the bull's spine. Here you can see it. Here down here is the Jed. You can see it. It looks just like it's the base of the spine. This is the Jed. This could be at tier two with these crossbars, and we see the Jed here with the crossbars. See the crossbars? Crossbars. This is the Jed. It says right here in Wikipedia. This represented the base of the spine right here, the sacrum of the bull's spine. What is the ankh? The ankh is the, the thoracic vertebrae of the bull's spine, and it's a cross-section. This is the ankh, and this is the thoracic. See how they're the same? Ankh, thoracic. Ankh, thoracic. So what does this mean? Why did the Egyptians have a preoccupation with the spine of a bull? Because it's all about control. They use this power, but they use it for evil. They keep you down the base rate. Possession, demonic possession. Open yourself up to spirits. Trying to find powers within yourself rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to give you power. So I wanted to cover that real quick. All right, let's close some of these windows, you guys. So just be careful with Kundalini and all that, okay? Um, I need to research it some more. But right off the bat, you know, you got this Jed right here, the Force. They actually even talk about um, levitating objects. So that's exactly what they show in the, the, the Star Wars films. The Jedi can levitate objects, okay? The Force within, the dark side and the light side, right? All right, back in the chat. Pick you guys up off the floor. <laughs> All right, let's continue on. Will Man's in the house. Teresa, got some new faces. Sabine Vleming is in the house. All right, we're going to round this out with some other images. This is the tree of L. L means tree, tree of life. Okay, the tree of the inner eye, the trees of the brain. Everything is trees and branches, fractals. What is the never-ending story? Well, 37 years ago, this book was released. And it's been immortalized in the Google Doodle never-ending story. 37 years later. Here it is here. Never-ending story. Google Doodle. Now, I know I'm a little late on this. It took me some time to actually figure it all out. Let's see here. Here it is. And here it is here. Here's the Google Doodle. And they show the serpent eating its tail right here. Boom. You got the red eye and the green eye. That's man. This is the serpent eating the dust. This is the fimbriae of the fallopian tube, fallopian fallacy, the lie, the father of the lie. Here's the serpent. Here we see Google. And this boy has no mouth and no ears because it's all about the eyes of good and evil, right? They know this. That's why the boy has no mouth and no and no ears. He's not saying or hearing anything. It's all about the eyes. Here you see the pyramid, the as above, so below pyramid. 
This is the image that comes in through your eye. And this is the star of David when you squeeze these two pyramids together. This exists at the center of your eye. As the image comes in, it comes in from the outside, forms a pyramid. This is why the Egyptians have pyramids on earth, right? Okay, They're key. they want to be gods on earth. The image comes in, it flips around. Your brain flips it around. Let's see as above. That's the God part. That's why when a child's in the womb, it's upside down because its feet are still in heaven until it's born. Okay? Twins are in a 69 position in the womb. So, image upside down, child in the womb upside down. It's all analogy. All right, so that's that. And what else do we have here? So that's what this is all about, you guys. Um, the a never ending story, 1997. All right. I think that pretty much ends this broadcast. You guys, I'll pop here in the chat if you guys want to have some discussions for a little bit before I get off of here. Let's take a look here. Yep, no speaking, no hearing, lost communications. Yeah, you know, I've, the the problem with the kundalini is I've yet to see someone who's doing kundalini yoga or these kinds of things that acknowledges Christ. And the minute you take Christ out of the center of this plan, which I think that we've pretty much proven that the entire history of the Bible is written into our DNA, the very anatomy of our bodies, we've done a really good job explaining that. Though people want to say we're just stretching things all over the place. You can say that maybe for one or two things, but when you show the, every single part of the human body reflected in the history of the Bible, it is no longer stretching and then becomes the truth. And then if at that point you deny the one Savior, Jesus Christ, even after it's been shown in your own anatomy, when all the other gods and all the other religions have not been able to show that, then we see how God outsmarted the devil. Because he knew the devil could never create a human being. He knew that only one God could do that. It was the only way that God could prove who he was. It's the only way that he could prove who his son was. Now we know the truth, you guys. Now the question is, what are we going to do with it? Are we just going to go, oh, this is really cool for us to know and watch? Or are we going to acknowledge what is really happening here? And are we going to speak it from the rooftops? not caring if people think we're crazy what are we going to do that is the question you guys so i'm going to leave it at that i love you guys share this copy this link again drop it in facebook drop it in twitter share it on your google plus put it in your playlist that's another way you guys can share this information every one of you guys has a youtube channel why don't you, you know, make playlists of this stuff so that other people come to your channel? That's how the truth gets spread, you guys. It doesn't get spread by us just liking what we have. We have to share it with people. We have to do our part. Anyway, I love each and every one of you, and I guess I will be seeing you pretty soon. Take care and be safe, you guys.